Just want to make sure you can all hear me on this one. This is Dr. Jack Wolfson, the paleocardiologist. You're in the chat box over there, uh, and you can feel free to ask questions. I want to welcome you all to my meeting this evening on how to go paleo, a practical uh, guide. I know you have a lot of things you could be doing. It is beautiful around the country in most places. Out here in Arizona, it is steamy hot pretty much every day. So it's five o'clock my time. It's a welcome opportunity for me to avoid the uh, the heat for another uh, 45 minutes or so. Um, please feel free to uh, hold your questions until the end, put it into the chat box, and we'll get through to all the questions. This will be recorded, so you will get a copy of the recording as well. And I do realize that there's so much free content available on the on the internet. We decided to charge for this webinar because when you get people to, to commit a little bit, little bit of money, people show up for the webinar, they pay attention to the content, so I think you uh, you get more value for that. And in addition, all the proceeds from tonight's webinar will be donated to an organization called Healing Hearts Arizona, which is an animal rescue that we are big uh, supporters uh, of, my wife and I and my two beautiful boys. So let's get rolling here. I'm going to share my desktop with you all. So go paleo. We're going to be talking about a lot of different things tonight. We're going to talk about what exactly paleo is, why it's heart healthy. We'll talk some meal planning. We'll talk about shopping. We'll do paleo on a budget. We'll talk about travel. And then we'll wrap it up. And like I said, we'll leave time for, for some Q&A uh, at the end. So let's get rolling. Can the food you eat cause all of these different conditions? Medical doctors are fantastic at providing labels to people, and a constellation or a group of symptoms is associated with this diagnosis, and different symptoms leads to this diagnosis, but everything relates to two things to me, poor nutrition and chemicals. That's why I wrote my Amazon best-selling book, The Paleo Cardiologist, and you look at this, uh, this smattering of conditions or illnesses or diseases and it's really coming from the same thing poor nutrition environmental pollutants toxins and chemicals now here's kind of where we went wrong we you know this is evolution here and anyone know this guy over there on the right sure we all do uh, this is all too common in, in society today. My mom comes into town from Las Vegas and she so, says, oh, Jack, you look so you know thin. And I say, mom, with all due respect, you're overweight. You're too fat. This is, you know, society is way overweight. They should be looking like the person just before the obese guy. This is the direction we want to go. It should be noted that the, the Neanderthal or the paleo man just to the left uh, there, uh, he is tall. He is upright. He is uh, really, there's evidence that we are kind of going backwards in an evolutionary scale right now uh, because of the condition on the, on the right. And what's happened is that over millions of years, we were eating a certain way. And we get into uh, about 10,000 years ago, we didn't get into the agricultural revolution. And the agricultural revolution, we started to farm and we started to, to domesticate animals. And once we were farming, we used that wheat and barley and rye and some of these ancient grains, but our bodies never ate those before. We started to prepare those grains and to bake those grains in a certain way. And once again, our bodies are not built for that. We are still of, of 10,000 years ago, 50,000 years ago, 100,000 years ago genetics. And even though agriculture became much more common 10,000 years ago, you know, it came into existence, still the vast more majority of people across the planet planet were hunter-gatherers actually up until just a few hundred years ago. So I'm Dr. Jack Wolfson, board certified cardiologist of the Doctors Wolfson. My wife is Dr. Heather Wolfson. We have a, a beautiful practice here in Paradise Valley, Arizona, where people from all over the world come to, to get the best in heart health. Once again, I am a board certified cardiologist. I've been called other names uh, before, but I am a board certified cardiologist with the American Board of Internal Medicine, subspecialty in cardiology. Took my recertification exam in 2012, eight hour test. Uh, and passed it with, with um, flying colors uh, near the top of my uh, class. I was with a large group in Arizona for 10 years and started my own practice four years ago. 
Okay, here's our paleo pyramid. And the foundation of our paleo pyramid is vegetables. You see different paleo pyramids. And paleo, once again, refers to that old Stone Age uh, time, uh, the time before recorded uh, history. And the foundation of ours is vegetables. So many paleo pyramids, if you look around other people, their foundation is meat. Ours is not. Our foundation is vegetables. Vegetables with every meal. Vegetables for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And we're going to go through all that stuff. And then the next levels are kind of uh, a, a really I just put it all into a pyramid but the reality is you can do whatever you're comfortable with uh, the uh, certainly we want to be eating meat fowl uh, such as chicken turkey Cornish hens we eat plenty of seafood we eat eggs avocados and olives and coconuts and nuts and seeds and on up the chain there animal fats such as uh, pork lard beef tallow uh, duck fat and then we do fruit in season and uh, Listen, like anyone, I start to evolve. I start to get better uh, at my craft. And on the top right there, I added in an extra box where we talk about organ meats. If you have thyroid problems, well, maybe you're deficient in thyroid gland. Liver problems, deficient in liver, kidney, heart, adrenals, on and on. Our paleo ancestors would eat those organ meats in preference to the ribeye or the T-bone or the fillet. They were These are the muscle meats. Our ancestors prized the organ meats and the good thing is for you is that organ meats are actually the cheapest when you can find high quality products but they're out there you, but nobody wants to eat them you be the person to eat them and you will reap the health rewards when a great white shark is attacked by a killer whale the killer whale knocks the great white shark unconscious uh, and then comes around for another spin and grabs and choose right that liver right out of the body and the rest of the shark falls to the bottom for the crabs and for the bottom feeders uh, to eat. So eat those organ meats, spices with every meal. I didn't put this slide in here, but I have the, the slide in other presentations where I talk about the spices are like pharmaceuticals, natural mini pharmaceuticals, which is clearly how the pharmaceutical industry was born by basing it off of our plants. Capers is another one of my favorite foods. Those small green buds get them organic. Uh, they are very high in quercetin. Qu quercetin is in is a tremendous anti-inflammatory, uh, found in, also in onions and garlic, uh, and it's in every anti-inflammatory supplement product as well. So why not get the benefit from the caper itself? And then fermented foods, kimchi, kombucha, sauerkraut. Uh, I'm not a big dairy fan as we will discuss, but things like kefir and yogurt uh, would be fermented uh, foods as well. And then over there on the left, we kind of see this uh, area free range, grass fed, organic and local. I'm gonna dive into this a little bit further, but this is what we're talking about. This is not Jack Wolfson saying, hey, Let's go over to Burger King and get a double Whopper, hold the bun. Don't do it. Now, here's an example of some modern-day paleo hunters. These are people in Africa living the paleo way. They grow to an old age. They don't die of heart disease. They don't die of diabetes. They don't die of cancer. They would die of trauma. That's how they would die. But in the wild, there are plenty of people with long gray hair. Uh, it's in the literature. I've had medical students that have gone on missions all around the world, and that's what they tell me, and that's what uh, is reality. Coconuts have been vilified for so many uh, years, uh, wrongly, incorrectly, trying to promote the hydrogenated soybean oil and all the other poisons that they're putting into our food. People in the South Pacific on those islands, they live off coconut. 50 to 60% of their diet is coconut and they do not have any heart disease, cancer, strokes, or diabetes. Why would a coconut cause us to get sick? It doesn't make sense. Our ancestors have been eating it for eons. All Mammals in the wild either eat other mammals or they eat insects or they eat both. The vegan population and the doctors who recommend a vegan diet are experimenting. There's been no one and no society in the history of the world that's ever been vegan. Don't go down that road. Paleo is the answer for anybody and everybody. I'm donating the proceeds from this meeting to Healing Hearts Arizona. Uh, 
I am uh, obviously I'm very, very, very into animal welfare. But the reality is for optimal human health, these are the foods that we need to eat. And these are the foods that we should be eating. Here is an example. The free-range grass-fed meats, the avocados, the seafood, the shellfish, the uh, nuts and seeds and coconuts and eggs and not too much on the fruit side. Uh, and once again, that foundation is all of those delicious vegetables. And in a little bit, I'll be sharing with you my uh, paleo shopping guide. And of course, you can get a copy of that at thedoctorswolfson.com. Public enemy number one is sugar. And here it is in, in most of its forms. There is more than this, but here's what we're talking about. Alcohol is essentially all sugar. Of course, uh, cookies and cupcakes and ice cream, soda pop and potato chips are just immediately digested into sugar. And even so many of these fruit juices are made with fruit. They're made with uh, uh, different additives, added, sometimes added sugar. You look at the labels on even some of these healthy juices and they're coming up with 20 to 30 grams of sugar per serving. There is a better option. Now, why is sugar bad? This list came from a list of 100. This goes on and on and on. What does sugar do? We for sure know it increases heart disease risk blood pressure, cholesterol, triglycerides. It leads to a lower HDL, those beneficial particles that aid in so many functions of the body, suppresses the immune system, feeds cancer, tooth decay, gallstones, gout, osteoporosis, dementia, and Parkinson's. Those people that eat the most amount of sugar had the highest risk of polio in the 1930s and 40s. Increases estrogen in men. How many men want higher levels of estrogen? I doubt you are one of them. Public enemy number two, grain. Grain in all of its form. Corn, rice, wheat bread, rye bread, whole grain, seven grain, cereals, pastas, oatmeal. Our ancestors did not eat these foods. We do not need these in our lifestyle to be healthy. I have hundreds if not thousands of patients that are following paleo and they are doing extremely well. Their blood testing looks phenomenal. They feel great. The weight looks great. We do not need anything from these. There is no nutrition of value in these foods that we cannot get from other sources. And one of the main things in there that is so toxic to the body is gluten. It's a small protein found in wheat and barley and rye and sometimes even oats. There's even a, a type of gluten that's in corn. What's the beauty of gluten and why gluten-free products may not taste quite as good is because gluten makes the bread chewy. It makes the croissant light and flaky. It does so many amazing things that actually sometimes products have more gluten added to make it do uh, you, know, uh, you know, wonderful things as far as the, the you know, packaging uh, and, and the taste of that particular uh, product. In fact, it's, it's used sometimes to boost pr protein uh, content. It can be hidden in any packaged product, so do not eat any packaged product unless it says gluten-free. Don't just read the ingredients. The box has, or can or uh, carton or whatever has to say gluten-free. Gluten damages the cells and junctions in the small intestine causing leaky gut syndrome. Leaky gut syndrome, and I'm going to talk about that in the next slide a little bit further, was not recognized by the medical doctors up until about 10 years ago when it started appearing in our medical literature. But the natural holistic doctors have been talking about it for years. My wife told me about it when we first met in 2004. I said, what are you talking about leaky gut syndrome? I just went through 10 years of training and we never talked about that diagnosis. Well, it's here. It's in the literature. Sometimes it's called um, intestinal hyperpermeability syndrome. What are the symptoms and diseases caused or exacerbated by gluten? All of them, especially your autoimmune conditions, but pretty much everything can be labeled as an autoimmune condition. Cardiovascular disease is autoimmune. There's a huge immune component to cardiovascular disease. When you look at a coronary plaque, you see a lot of things in there. One of those items is cholesterol, but it is 
inside of these immune cells. Monocytes become macrophages, become foam, foam cells. It is an, an immune response. Leaky gut syndrome, here it is. These undigested food particles and toxins get in through the intestinal lining, get into the bloodstream, into the lymphatics, and the body recognizes that as a foreign object and goes into attack mode. We should have these tight junctions. This is normal, so the food particles don't get in. They can only get in this one direction through these what are called villi this is how they can get through and if they can't get through they should not be getting through and then you poop them out the other side now there are amazing tests that i am doing in my office uh, this company here called vibrant uh, wellness out of san francisco they test for leaky gut and weak gluten sensitivity here you can see they're testing for celiac antibodies they're looking at the leaky gut panel and they're determining high levels of zonulin, anti-zonulin antibodies, anti-actin, lipopolysaccharides. This is bacteria that is getting into your body that do not belong. We can measure that. This test is five pages long and just gives more information here. I just you, you know you should not be eating gluten. You should know you should be following paleo. But sometimes you don't listen. So sometimes we need to show you your personal piece of paper, your personal certificate that says do not eat these foods. And public enemy number three, dairy. Dairy uh, is for baby cows. It is not for human beings. Mo mother's milk mother's breast milk is for baby humans cow's milk is for cows giraffe milk is for giraffes and whale milk is for baby whales is there nutritional value to this yes but is there detrimental value to a lot of people yes if you're going to do dairy do it raw at least that would be in its unprocessed unpasteurized unhomogenized form raw dairy from a free-range grass-fed cow Dairy can cause so many symptoms, sinus congestion, upper respiratory infections, ear infections, gastrointestinal symptoms, leaky gut, on and on and on. Dairy is not paleo. Our ancestors did not go up to an other animals and try and milk them. They would get a hoof in the face and they would die. And then, of course, let's get rid of the soy. Let's get rid of... Uh, the corn and all the corn products. Potatoes, sweet potatoes can be okay on occasion. If you're trying to lower blood sugar, maybe skip it. But there's a lot of value to potatoes, especially sweet potatoes and yams, because they are prebiotics, help build the good bacterial flora in the gut. But once you uh, buy something that's processed, such as this, and a lot of times these fries are coated with gluten, do them organically and sparingly on occasion, but there really is no need to have soy and corn uh, in the diet. If soy is not organic, it's definitely genetic, genetically modified. It is sprayed with Monsanto's uh, Roundup uh, uh, glyphosate, and glyphosate in and of itself causes leaky gut syndrome, along with leaky heart syndrome and leaky brain syndrome, and on and on and on. When we talk about paleo, we're talking about responsible paleo, respecting the earth, respecting the animals, eating organically, eating organically. No matter what diet you follow after our conversation tonight, do yourself a favor, do the world a favor, do it organically. That way you're getting everything that you love, whether it's the sugar or it's the grain or it's the dairy, but you don't get the chemicals and the pesticides that are so ravaging to the body and to the planet. If you want chocolate, go get organic chocolate. If you want organic ice cream, go get organic grass-fed ice cream. Uh, I think you get the point here. Because this is what's happening. Here's just a crop duster coming across and just spraying its uh, fumigants, pesticides, insecticides, herbicides all over our crops. What do you think the life expectancy is of this guy who's spraying this? If it's killing bugs and killing weeds, it's going to kill us. And one of the ways it may do so is to kill the good bacteria we have in our gastrointestinal tract. How about the life expectancy of this child? What kind of world are we creating for our children, for our grandchildren?
Why do I do this? Why do I take the positions I have? I want to change the world. I want to make the better place for my two boys, for my family, for your family going forward. And this is how we're going to do it by voting with our wallets and voting with our pocketbook because we want to shop from farms like these. This is ideal. Here's where we want to go. We do not want to eat these kind of cow products. I never would touch any animal meat, and I have. I came from Chicago. I ate every uh, piece of garbage uh, junk food possible for the first 31 years of my life. These are tortured animals given hormones, antibiotics, eating grain, no sunshine, wallowing in their own filth. These are sickly, sickly, stressed out, tortured animals. Unlike these free-range, grass-fed cows. It is truly a thing of beauty. This is what we should be eating. Not pigs, tortured pigs from crates, but look at these beautiful pigs that do so many things uh, on earth to help the earth, the farmland in a delicate cycle and a quality farm. This is the stuff that we need to be eating. Not chicken in cages but free range chickens. Look how beautiful that is. Can you imagine the health and the quality of that bird compared to the previous? Here's a picture of a wild salmon. Wild salmon swimming upstream. Bears will jump off cliffs to get at wild salmon like this. And fish has so many medicinal values, so much nutritional value. It's pure brain food, the omega-3s that you cannot get from walnuts or chia seed or flax seed. You have to get it from the sea. And this is how we're going to do it by eating wild salmon as opposed to farm-raised salmon. Ask the waiter. Ask the person at the seafood counter. Do not buy your fish from a fish tank. It's very, very simple. When it comes to fish, my favorites are wild salmon, sardines, anchovies, is what uh, is what uh, we're looking for. Herring, the smaller fish, mahi mahi. Daily meal plan. Let's talk about what we do on a daily basis. Uh, every single morning, I start off with these three products up here on the left, and I'm going to give you a special offer. So stay tuned for the end of this class for your special offer on these products from the Doctors Wolfson. This is how I start off every day. I think a greens juice is fantastic. Fruit avocado. You can make your own cereal with nuts and seeds and coconut and raw cacao to make your own cereal. It's filling. You'll be full for hours and hours. Of course, eggs, eggs with salmon, eggs with bacon, eggs with sausage, leftovers from the night before. That those are perfect uh, morning meal. But this is how I start off every day with what I call the triple combo. It's got fiber, it's all organic, and it's a thousand percent food. I've got hundreds of patients, hundreds of people uh, that follow us on the internet, if not thousands, that are taking our products and they absolutely love them. We get great response on that. The medicinal value of, of the beetroot is that it just opens up those uh, pipes uh, known as arteries in the heart and blood vessels circulating around the body. It just opens up that super highway. I usually recommend one teaspoon at least once a day, if not twice a day, heaping teaspoon. The superfood is the chlorella spirulina. It binds toxins, binds metals. Uh, spirulina is proven in a recent meta-analysis uh, looking at hundreds and hundreds of patients and studies that show that it really does wonders for the lipid uh, profile. We take the superfood after any kind of seafood meal to bind up any residual toxins that are there. And then our what, are, what is now called uh, daily greens. The daily greens is just uh, a whole bunch of greens in the product. No stevia, no citric acid in any of these. Uh, all, no flavorings, all organic, just just tremendous food. Here's a, a picture of a typical lunch. This is my lunch uh, sitting at my computer. And this is what I load, just all the different vegetables into the salad. This particular day, it happened to be uh, a deviled egg. Other days, it may be a can of sardines on top of a salad like this. It may be just nuts and seeds. It may be a vegan lunch. It may be an avocado. It may be a combination of all these things. It may be olives that we put in there. But this is the typical meal that I do. Maybe sometimes it'll be deli meat or it'll be leftover chicken uh, or a hamburger patty. That's lunch. Lunch is always a big salad, tons of raw vegetables.
And here's some depiction of dinner. I love this picture over on the right. This is recently in Santa Monica. We just loaded up on oysters and raw clams, raw oysters, raw clams. It was a delicacy. We had so much fun. Uh, my son does not have the, uh, a big smile on his face, but I assure you he was happy and he gobbled down uh, most of this uh, plate along with my wife. They barely saved me anything. Thank you. And then over on the left, we got a beautiful salmon with fresh sage from our garden. It's so easy to grow herbs in the garden, sage, rosemary, thyme, oregano. As we said, these are these are natural pharmaceuticals, if you will. They are medicinal. They do so many incredible things. There's a pharmaceutical class of blood pressure medications called ACE inhibitors. And these all these different spices do the same thing. They naturally inhibit that ACE enzyme which is overactivated because people are not eating their herbs and spices. And then here in the middle, we've got some chicken. And in that chicken, there are olives and there are capers. And there's a beautiful rosemary sprig. This was just super healing. The Doctors Wolfson are working on a cookbook. Uh, cookbook and we get these uh, uh, recipes up on the website uh, when we can and if you're a you know signed up with us uh, be sure to be on the lookout for some of these recipes snacks uh, um, cut veggies the, you know so uh, you know p basically you don't you shouldn't need to snack too much but if you do it's basically there, there's a lot of different options here and our ancestors survived on this for millions of years cut veggies nuts and seeds avocado olives coconuts sardines are a great snack hard-boiled eggs deli meats snack bars that are low carb you know so you can find some really quality bars that typically they're going to be meat bars sometimes there's some wild salmon uh, jerky make sure there's no soy read the labels make sure there's no gluten and of course you can snack on fruit but i really once again i do not recommend fruit more than once a day if you're trying to lose weight cut out the fruit if you've got a yeast candida issue cut out the fruit and then here we have our grocery list. Uh, this is a, an example of the items in here. And I do not have capers in here, but capers is one of my new uh, foods. We're going to talk about beverages in a second. We'll talk about alcohol a little bit. But here's a you know, picture of the fats that we, uh, that we cook with or that we use. We love to cook with, uh, with lard, uh, which is from pork, beef tallow, duck fat. Uh, the, we do cook in coconut oil. Uh, we cook in bacon grease that we'll save. But these other oils are so medicinal. Black human seed oil has been used by the Egyptian for 5,000 years. Uh, there are just so many medicinal benefits, anti-cancer, anti-yeast. Uh, it just does uh, just about everything. And, uh, you know, really, really just a good general list to take into the grocery store. And this is available on our website. If you have trouble finding it, please feel free to email us at health at the doctorswolfson.com. Beware of your morning coffee, right? I've totally bashed just about everything. And now Wolfson is going to attack your coffee. Here's what I want to say about coffee. It's the third most sprayed crop in the world after cotton and tobacco. If you're going to drink coffee, do it organically. Do it organic coffee. Tastes the same, same amount of caffeine. I wouldn't overdo coffee, you know, uh, one to two cups a day. It has to be organic. And if you drink decaf, it really has to be organic because decaf coffee that is not organic is treated with toxins, hexanes, other pollutants, contaminants. You do not want that in your body. Here are the beverages we recommend. Here's a beautiful greens drink. We talked before about our triple combo. I love sparkling water, especially in the summertime, and add a little citrus to it. Add some herbal tea to it. It, it satiates you. It gets rid of the cravings. Here's some beautiful kombucha, fermented beverage uh, from a fantastic company, all organic in a glass bottle. Tea has medicinal value. Coffee has medicinal value. But what I would urge you to do is look into a high-quality, under-the-counter uh, kitchen uh, model. Uh, the one we have in our house is from a company called Pristine Hydro. They are based out of California. You're looking at about a $2,000 investment with uh, a new filter every 18 months for a couple of hundred dollars. But this is a super complicated system. It's easy for the plumber to install, but it does just some 
amazing things to the water. It purifies, get all this, the impurities out, adds back in magnesium, potassium, sodium, and um, uh, 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 calcium, and also runs, runs it over river rock and, and lodestone, which is magnetized rock, to give that water its charge back like it's flowing down the mountains of Colorado. So Pristine Hydro, call over there, talk to Ginger, tell them the Dr. Wolfson sent you. <clears throat> Excuse me. I, um, I do get a commission uh, on this product, uh, my wife and I. Any of those commissions that we do get from your purchase is related to this by talking to Ginger, I'm going to donate it to Healing Hearts Arizona. Homemade nut milk. Real simple, you got the blender, hopefully it's a Vitamix. You paid all the money for the Vitamix. Here's the recipe, ready? Almonds water blend. Pecans water blend. Walnuts water blend. Whatever nuts you want to put in there. Uh, you can throw in coconut flakes in there. If you need to put a little uh, little teaspoon of raw honey, go ahead and do it. If you want to use a little bit of organic maple syrup, if you want to use a little bit of organic cane sugar, some coconut water, go ahead and do it. It stores in a glass container in the refrigerator for up to five days, although I'm not aware of anyone who's ever wound up in the hospital uh, or sick because of uh, uh, expired uh, nut milk. Don't buy it in that container that's made out of paper or wax or plastic or whatever that stuff is made out of while it was sitting behind your favorite store uh, baking. Strain in a nut bag if desired. My wife likes it strained. I don't. I paid for the uh, nuts. Uh, I want to eat them. I want the fiber. Non-paleo beverages. This is the stuff that should be off the list. Alcohol, dairy, soy milk, soda, and anything that comes from a can. If you drink alcohol, it has to be gluten-free. My preference would be for organic tequila or organic wine. Please uh, look into that. A lot of people say alcohol is health healthy. I don't limit it to one to two drinks per day. It's pure sugar, damages the liver, damages the brain, led to the demise of my father. We don't need it. Travel. Here's a big page. What do you do when you're traveling? Call ahead. Where is the nearest natural grocer? Where's the nearest, uh, what, what kind of restaurants are you going to eat at? Chance favor, uh, favors the prepared mind. So be prepared. Do not show up empty-handed. Uh, bring your own food when you're traveling. Cut the veggies. Sea vegetables such as nori is a wonderful snack. The kids love that. Nuts and seeds go on the plane. Avocado, olives, coconut go on the plane. Sardines go on the plane, although your neighbors may not be happy. Hard-boiled eggs, same thing. Deli meat, snack bars, fruit. This is just uh, uh, so simple. Do not be caught going to an airport restaurant. Do not be caught, um, heaven forbid, eating uh, food off the airplane. Buy plenty of quality water. You're going to go through security and you're going to get plastic bottles. Unfortunately, that's all you can do. But Fiji, sparkling water, all that stuff is delicious. When you travel by car, things get a lot, uh, a lot easier to pack your own stuff. Do not be stuck in the car hungry. Do not be a truck driver pulling to the nearest gas uh, station or uh, Arby's or McDonald's or any other fast food place. Be prepared. Bring, sanitize, bring sanitizers when you travel to make sure you wipe down everything and anything that you touch. That's important. Uh, supplements are, are very beneficial in this realm, but certainly bringing a lot of probiotics and digestive enzymes whenever you travel. And call ahead to the hotel and ask them not to spray chemicals in your room. Uh, try and travel as chemically free as, as possible. 24-hour fasting, I think, is very unique. I don't want to get too much into it here. Maybe we'll save it for another conversation. But when I do it, what I do is I have a meal on Sunday night, and then I have nothing all day Monday, Monday night. It's only water, 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 water. And then my next meal per se, is Tuesday morning where I do my triple combo greens drink. So it's actually, it's a 36 hour fast of what I do. It's okay to skip a meal once in a while. You're going to make it. If you got weight you want to lose, if you want to let the system reset and you want to cleanse the body, just give it water for 24 hours. By doing so, you're cutting your calorie intake by 15%. And not to mention, those next couple meals, you don't even want to eat that much. So I've had dramatic results with my patients using 24-hour fasting. Paleo on a budget. Oh, I can't afford to eat paleo. Well, here's the story. 
and this may not necessarily apply to you, but stop dyeing your hair, stop getting your nails done, stop uh, going to Starbucks and getting your coffee, stop with the alcohol, cut the cable bill, uh, get a cheaper car, get a cheaper house, get you on a less expensive vacation, whatever you need to do, feed yourself organic paleo foods. The best thing, like I said before, about the about the uh, glandular uh, uh, organs, the glands, the thyroid, the adrenal, the thymus, the kidney, the liver, the heart, is that they're cheap. Even at Whole Foods, often called Whole Paycheck, grass-fed chicken livers are three forty-nine a pound. You don't need much of that. How about a third pound grass-fed burger, 85% uh, lean? That's seven dollars a pound. Sometimes you can find it for cheaper. That's two dollars, three dollars a burger on top of a four dollar organic salad. This is doable, people. This is doable. It's it's an excuse. It's an excuse. There are other ways you need to cut. Don't buy the new, uh, you know, the newest gadgets. Don't you know? Don't buy the new computer. Wh whatever it is, our ancestors, food came first. Do the same for you. Where to shop? Uh, number one, shop in your garden. Uh, even if you just do an herb garden, just grow something. Grow something in your house, in your backyard, wherever you can. Then, of course, support your local farmer's market, your local natural grocer, or the uh, big box chain natural grocers, Whole Foods, Trader Joe's, your big box grocery store like your Fry's or Albertson's. Um, a lot of these places have organic coming in. Costco has organics. Uh, just be careful with some of these big box uh, places and the quality of organic that they're getting. The best thing is to know your farmer, support uh, the smaller folks uh, in this uh, in this industry. Online Thrive Market Vital Choice is expensive, but they have got some of the best seafood you're ever going to taste. Uh, online uh, meat uh, suppliers as well. Uh, a lot of people ship, you know, cross country. And you can do it that way. Amazon is another resource, especially for things like sardines. So six weeks to paleo. Let's come up with a six-week plan of how we're going to do this. Some people can stop in a day. Some people, it takes a little more time. Week one, no gluten, no alcohol. Week two, no corn or soy, in addition to the components from week one. Week three, no dairy. Week four, no rice or beans. Week five, no sugar except fruit. And this is a good time also to get rid of all the grains that we mentioned. Uh, if, if there's any remaining and if you're looking at things like you know, what the gluten-free grains like buckwheat, uh, this is a good time to get rid of it uh, to go totally paleo. The weight will fall off and you will be at your perfect paleo weight and you will look amazing and feel amazing and then week six is the time we're going to give up the fruit do that for a week and then you can slowly add the fruit back in one piece per day so that is our six weeks to paleo finally this is a gentleman who saw me a few years ago he was scheduled to have uh, surgery gastric bypass surgery I saw him as a cardiologist, said, okay, you're high risk for the surgery, but go ahead and have it. And I gave him a, uh, a clearance form to do so. But on the way out, I said, you know what, do me a favor. I, I said, I got to get this off my chest. Here's my paleo prescription. I wrote it on a piece of paper. All the foods that we mentioned above, the vegetables, nuts, seeds, eggs, avocados, coconuts, uh, meats, and seafood, and just follow the list here. I don't hear back from a three later, three until three years later. He sends me a letter along with this picture and this picture. This is what happened over three years. A totally new man that saved his life. He never had the surgery. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? Are you going to keep living your same life? Are you going to keep doing the same thing? Is every day Groundhog Day for you? Are you going to keep waking up and eating the same toxic breakfast? Or are you ready to make a difference? Are you ready to change your life? Are you ready to get healthy and stop going to doctors and stop taking pharmaceuticals? Are you ready to make a difference? I'm here to help you. And what I want to do is I want you to take my triple combo. This is one one month supply of each product. Each is a serving of a heaping teaspoon. The daily greens, the beetroot powder, and the superfood, all organic, no additives, no preservatives. 
no stevia, no flavorings. It's just pure food. And when you buy all three by following that link at the doctorswolfson.com backslash go dash paleo, you're going to find this page and you're going to opt in and we're going to ship these products to you with free shipping in the United States. Along with every order, I'm going to throw in a free copy of my Amazon best-selling book, The Paleo Cardiologist. This can be a snack. This is stuff that you travel with. This is the, your breakfast. This can be your lunch. This can be your dinner. This could be your cleanse. This has fiber. This is what you want to live on. And I'm offering you a tremendous deal tonight when you get your 15% off of the triple combo. Make a difference now. Make the changes now. Change your life. Change your health. Let's put the medical doctors uh, out of business except for in the emergency rooms. And together we're going to change the planet. So thank you so much for being with me tonight. We'll send you an email of the replay and I will uh, end the slideshow and open up to uh, questions. Thank you, uh, Alice. Uh, looking forward to the cookbook. I'm looking forward to the cookbook as well. Uh, like anything, as a very busy doctor, it's hard to do, but we're getting there. Um, uh, Tammy uh, has asked, uh, how do you prepare your morning blend of greens, beetroot uh, powder? I personally put it in water. I uh, Every single morning for my wife and for my two boys, ages nine and four, we put it into uh, water. You can put it into juice. You can put it into your nut milk. Uh, I joke around with my patients. You can put it into your gluten-free vodka. Whatever you want to do, uh, it's up to you. I don't want to make the choice. So many of those similar products have flavorings in there, citric acid, stevia, sugar. I don't want to do that. Mine is all food. You do what you want with it. Uh, um, we have a message here from Gayla out in uh, Kingwood. Uh, I missed what you said about potatoes. Are they okay if they're organic? Sweet potatoes and yams are okay. I wouldn't overdo it. I wouldn't do more than maybe uh, two to three per week. Uh, a treat of ours is sweet potato fries. We fry them up in duck fat. They're absolutely delicious. Uh, of course, everything is organic. Uh, Brooke has a comment. Uh, Hello, is too much carbonated water bad for your bones? I think that's probably uh, debatable. Uh, I, I, my, my, thought is on that is that yeah we shouldn't be drinking carbonated water all day long but i think it's a nice treat uh for night time if you do have and you've been labeled with osteoporosis it may be something you want to keep to a minimum uh, michael asked a question about probiotics okay to consume definitely we can certainly get plenty of probiotics from our fermented foods uh that we mentioned above and i love fermented kimchi and there's so many good organic brands kimchi sauerkraut organic vegetables uh uh fermented vegetables, but probiotics are super healthy. Uh, we have a couple amazing brands. On a, one is on our website. It's our product called uh, Gut Flora. Uh, if it's not up there, it will be up there soon. You can call, um, uh, you can call uh, our office and get the uh, Gut Flora uh, and also the multi-probiotic from Original Medicine. That's what we take. Uh, Tammy mentions sardines. Uh, they're, they're actually, they're in the can and that's unfortunate. So you want to find a BPA free can. The sardines are cooked. They're delicious, loaded with omega threes. Uh, they come in a lot of different varieties as far as olive oil or, uh, cayenne, uh, pepper oil. They, there's a whole variety to do sardines. They're so easy to travel around with, uh, put them in your pocket. I used to carry them into the hospitals with, you know, one pocket at a can of sardines, the other an avocado. And that was my, uh, lunch. Uh, Sonia talks about uh, the truth about cancer and the fact that they don't support meat. But um, uh, as far as I'm concerned, uh, paleo does not support cancer when you're eating free-range grass-fed meats. Uh, Richard talks about uh, travel. Take your greens drink without carrying the bottles. What I like to do is I, I would prepare, uh, you know, you can put that into a plastic baggie. You can put it into a smaller bottle, just the servings that you need to travel. Uh, Ron uh, from Phoenix asks about stevia. I'm not a, a big fan of stevia. Uh, I think it's got hormonal properties to it. I think it's very easy to overdo. Uh, a lot of other uh, authorities think st stevia is okay. I think the jury's still out. I tend to avoid it. Most importantly, I don't like the way it tastes. Brooke 
Uh, there's another question about uh, hummus, and is hummus in line with the paleo diet? Hummus comes from a bean, the garbanzo bean. Uh, I uh, prefer uh, tahini, which tastes similar, and that comes from a seed. Hummus is gluten-free. It's okay from time to time. Do it organically. Um, Lisa uh, talked about the uh, missing the six weeks to paleo and asked me to repeat. So basically what it is, each, uh, each week for six weeks you cut out something. First thing you cut out is, is the gluten and then you're going to cut out the soy and the corn and then cut out the dairy uh, and then uh, you're going to cut out the, uh, the fruit and you cut out the alcohol uh, and you do a little bit as time goes on. And uh, Larry asked a question about uh, an irritated gallbladder. Uh, there's a lot of different things when it comes to gallbladder and gallbladder health, but there's no doubt that paleo nutrition helps with gallbladder uh, health, and there's a lot of other techniques for gallbladder that I can't really get into uh, tonight. Uh, Tammy has a question about eggs, and yes, we, we want really what we want regarding eggs, we want pasture-raised eggs. Cage-free is not enough. Cage-free doesn't mean much. We want it to be pasture-raised, preferably labeled as organic. So if they are given supplemental feed, we can be sure that it's organic feed. We raised backyard chickens. We do not have them currently. We're going to be getting them again soon. But our backyard chickens, they ate whatever. We ate paleo food. They ate the uh, dogs, uh, raw dog food. They, uh, they're they omnivores. They eat bugs. They eat insects. They eat crickets. They eat vegetables. So that's a great question about the egg. And you know you get a quality egg when you have that super bright yolk, uh, that just um, uh, beautiful, uh, deep, uh, orange or yellow yolk. And then there's another question here uh, from uh, Francis. What is your raw to cooked ratio? I would say raw uh, two thirds to three quarters overcooked uh, when, when it comes to vegetables. And uh, the test that I do for inflammation, I, I do some very extensive tests and I look at, of course, HSCRP, I look at oxidized LDL, I look at myeloperoxidase, I look at fibrinogen, I look at uh, phospholipase A2, interleukin-6, interleukin-1b, uh, one a, um, uh, uh, tumor necrosis factor. There's a lot of different tests we can look at for inflammation, and if, you're not, if your doctor is not doing that, find a doctor who will do that for you. Any other questions, please fire away. I know we're going through a lot there. Uh, and uh, this is really just exciting because we've got so many people on this call. So many people are anxious to make a difference. Uh, and, you know, once again, uh, I'll email you the link of where to go to the doctorswolfson.com backslash go dash paleo. And that's where you're going to get your deal. That's where you're going to uh, get the products. That's where you're going to get your free book. Uh, and that's where you're going to start changing your life and getting healthy and making a difference. These are great gifts for family members. Uh, why get them something that they're not going to use or not going to like? Make a difference in the world. Make a difference in their lives by getting these products. Uh, thank you so much, Richard in Florida. He comments, uh, nice job, and I do appreciate that. I, I'm very passionate, if you can't tell, about what I do, uh, and it's uh, it's really a blessing. We are we're lecturing next week uh, live in Atlanta to 400 doctors and 1,000 students. Then we'll be in San Francisco lecturing at an event called The Wave, and then we'll be in Omaha. And then I'll be out here at the Creative Living Fellowship in Phoenix. And then we have another, uh, we have a Chicago event. We'll be in Dallas for the Truth About Cancer speaking in October. I will be in Deadwood, uh, South Dakota. We'll be all over. Uh, and um, uh, Tammy, thank you. Uh, Lisa, thank you so much. I'm glad you got the book and listened to the audio book. Uh, the audiobook uh, is is very good from what I've been told. I have not listened to it fully. I've listened to bits and pieces. Uh, that is obviously not me who's doing the recording. I sometimes wish it was. Uh, maybe on the next book. Okay. Thank you again. And if you have any questions, please email us, health at the doctors, Wolfson. And until next time, stay paleo, stay responsible paleo, stay organic, be healthy. 
Have a great evening.